Hey there, Nick Lee here with Pragmatic Works. Thanks for tuning in to today's edition of Nick's Power BI Tricks. This time, we're going to be talking about data modeling. Now, this isn't going to be a guide on how to model your data. It is going to be strictly on tips and tricks to make your life easier when you're modeling your data. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. Before we begin, want to learn more about Power BI? Visit prag.works nick40 and you'll get a 40% discount on an annual on-demand learning subscription and you'll get access to over 100 courses. Now onto the video. First and foremost, as you can see on my screen, I have a Power BI report that has some stuff in it. it has a few tables, has a few measures, and let's kind of take a look and see what we got going on here. So in total, there are about eight different tables that I have on screen, as you can see. And in these eight different tables, I have a couple of facts. And these facts that I have, have a few measures in them. And how do you tell something's a measure? Just as a quick reminder, it has this little calculator icon. Now, if I want to go in here and find all my measures, it's kind of cumbersome because I have to drill open these individual tables and look and see where these measures are. I'm looking for a calculator icon. Now, mind you, there's always a search at the top. So I could search for something like total sales if I wanted to. I can search up here for that and notice all my total whatever is pop populating. But let's say I just wanted a list of all my measures so I could add them to visuals as needed. It's not super easy to do that in Power BI. But one way that you can accomplish this is by building what I like to call a measures repository. What this measures repository is, is essentially a table that we create simply for storing measures and that's it. That way it keeps them all in one spot. Let me walk you through how to do that. So really loading in any table you want to would work for this, but I typically just create them right here in my Power BI desktop application, a very, very simple way. How I do this is I first scroll to the top of my screen and up here in the home ribbon, there is this enter data button. Enter data simply just creates a manual table for us. That's it, very simple. If I click on enter data, I can see that it's given me an option to create a table. Let me make this a little smaller here. There we go. I want to call this table underscore measures. Why do I call it underscore measures? Well, because how this table populates in the pane on the far right side where it lists all of our tables, it's going to list alphabetically. If I want a spot to keep all my measures in one nice little neat spot, if I lead it with an underscore, it keeps it right at the top. Nice little, nice little handy dandy trick there. Next thing is I want to name this column anything. I'm going to call it hide me and you're going to see why shortly. And I just need to put anything as a record here. I'm just going to put the number one. It really is inconsequential what the column name is or actually what is contained in the records. But I'm going to go ahead and hit load to load this table to my data model. One row loaded. Let's take a look and see what this looks like. You see on the far right side, there it is. It's at the top because it's alphabetical. Leading with an underscore puts it all the way to the top. If I select it, as you can see, there is one column in one row called hide me. Now I'm not necessarily going to hide it just yet. Uh, but first what we're going to do is I need to add measures to this table. And remember, when you add a measure to a table, it actually doesn't populate here in the table view or also known as the data view. Nothing populates here. It is simply a measure that's stored in some type of table. So we're going to keep it stored here in these measures table. Well, what if I already have all these measures already created? Now what am I going to do? Well, pretty simple fix. There's a few ways to go about this, but I like to do this from the modeling view. So if I look at the model view, this is the third button down on the far left side, click on that. I'm going to get an overview of my whole model. Notice here, I got a lot of tables and stuff going on. We'll get back to that in a moment. But what I want to do is I want to go and start finding all my measures that exist. So let's say here, this max sale price that we've created in a previous video, I could select it. And when I have it selected, I could see in this properties pane, there is a tab that says home table. If I click on this drop down and select underscore measures, now you can see already at the top, max sale price moved into the underscore measures table. Excellent. 
That's exactly what we wanted to see. I'm going to do this for just a couple more measures just so you can see. If I scroll down, I'm going to grab total sales. Scroll up a little bit. Put that in the home table of underscore measures. Total sales not USA. Scroll up, home table, underscore measures. And lastly, total sales USA, home table, underscore measures. All right. So just to go back, we removed all those measures over. Let's see what it looks like in the table view. I'm going to go to the far left side and select table view. And then notice that we see them all here in the underscore measures table. That's great. Now, when I go back to my report view, if you look at the visual that we already created, if we select the visual and then hover over the columns section in the visualizations pane here, we can see that, notice that these measures dynamically automatically says that, hey, this is now stored in the underscore measures table. Um, you can see that on the tooltip when I hover, hover over it pretty easily. So now we have stuff stored in the underscore measures table. Now this hide me column, I'm never gonna use this for reporting. There's absolutely zero reason to report on this. So I'm gonna right click and hit hide. Now that that column's hidden, now I only have measures. And you might have noticed, but as soon as I hit it and there's only measures getting displayed in this table called underscore measures, now this has a new icon. Notice this underscore measures table has a little calculator icon next to it instead of a table icon. Power BI was able to recognize, hey, they have a table and they're only displaying measures. They probably want a measures repository. And that's exactly what we did. Let's go back to the drawing board here a little bit. So now I have all these measures and let's say that I want to organize them. Once you start creating more in-depth reports that have a lot more information in them, have a lot more data, have a lot more measures. I've seen many reports with 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 measures, just depending on how large it's being created. And even if you have one of these measures repositories, it is a lot to look through, way too much. Well, there's actually a way you can organize this data model uh, with measures by creating folders within your data model. Let's see how we do that. To accomplish this, we're going to go back to the model view on the left side. All right, so now I'm back to the model view. I'm going to go back to my measures repository. Notice hide me is here. It has a little eyeball icon saying that it's hidden. That's just what that means. And now if I select on one of my measures, I could select max sale price, for instance. And just for an example purpose, uh, I'm going to scroll down and see, look, this says display folder. Well, there's no drop down here, it's just text. That's it, it's just a text box. So in this display folder, I will need to type in the text that I want this to look like as a folder. So I'm gonna hit display folder. Um, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna call it max prices, just because it's different than total sales. I'm gonna hit enter, and notice now, it's now in its own individual folder. I'm going to do the same thing for total sales. Display folder, total sales. I'm going to save myself a little bit of time and copy this text because again, there's no drop down here. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to repeat that process for the next three, next couple total sales measures. Now that that's done, if I go back to my report view and look at my report, when I go to look for measures to put in a visual, I have this measures repository on the top right and I have it sorted by folders. Now that we got these folders made up, it looks way more organized and it looks way better and it's gonna be way easier to use as well. We have a lot of different options available to us in this model view, a lot of different settings we could change. Let's look at another example. If I open my dim date table, notice I have all these different fields here that have this little sigma icon. Well, let's actually take a look at what those fields look like. So this field of calendar year, as we know, as you'd expect, I don't have to show you. These are just a list of years. What happens if I drop this in a table? So if I open up my table that's on my, on my report page and check the box for calendar year to drop it in, let's take a look and see what happens. It is summing up my calendar year. That is just fantastic. That's exactly what you want when you're looking at calendar years. We all know that's not true. 
So how do you fix that? In the model view, I can go to, boom, the model view. And I could go back up here, go to dim date and select my calendar year. With calendar year selected, I can scroll down, go to advanced. And down here in advanced, advanced it says summarize by. If I click this drop down, I have a different options. Well, do I want to count my years? Do I want to min my years? Do I want to average my years? I'm going to select none because I actually don't want to summarize or aggregate my calendar year column by anything. So now that I selected none, notice now that little sigma icon, which means auto sum or auto aggregate is gone. So now when I go back to my report view and it's going to be messed up because it's kind of the metadata stored here. But if I remove calendar year from my columns and then re-add it back in, notice how calendar year is now showing the actual years rather than some aggregated value that wouldn't make sense otherwise. Well, that's not the only benefit of doing what we just did. Now, what if you wanted to use some fields that weren't a measure, you wanted to use an implicit measure for whatever reason, and you didn't want it a sum, you wanted it to be a something else. You wanted a count, you wanted a min, you wanted something else to display automatically. Well, there's a way to manage that as well. So let's say I wanted to look at implicitly, hypothetically speaking, the minimum date, the earliest date that populated for a any given color of my products. So I'm gonna remove calendar year from my table and I am just going to drop in full date no, not full date alternate key. Let's do uh, the earliest month number. Yeah, that, that'll be fun. So currently, I dropped in month number of year. Notice it summed everything up again. Um, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, let's let's move on with that and switch that summarization. Let's say I wanted to look at the min month of every year. Well, we know the min month of probably going to be January of everything, but that's fine. This is just an example. So if I go to the model view and select month number of year, it's summarized by, and I just wanted to do the min month of any year that exists where this product was sold. Go back to the report view. Remember, re-add it once you change that aggregation type. And see, it's a min of one. All right, well, what if we add calendar year? Now, minimum one of each calendar year. Now that makes sense because it's saying we had sales in January of every year. But what it's doing is automatically aggregating how we explicitly want it to with an implicit measure. So in that model view, changing the aggregation types, pretty helpful. The last thing I wanna look at is in our model view, we want to look at these tables. And now we're not gonna leave this model view. We're gonna stay here for the rest of this video. What we're gonna do here is if we actually zoom out a little bit, it's a little bit big. We have this little checkbox that is highlighted. Now I love this checkbox. It should be on my default, but make sure you have it there. What this checkbox says is show related fields when card is collapsed. So what this means is, is when you're looking at this data model and you're like, whoa, there's a lot going on here. What are these relationships? Yes, you can highlight the relationships to see what's what, but not always are the relationships gonna pop up as a highlight. This is a great example. Sales territory is related to the factor internet sales table, but we can't see it. We'd have to scroll down to the bottom and it's, see, oh, now I see sales territory key. Let's check, okay, now it's highlighted. That's where the relationship is. Alternatively, if we just click somewhere on the background, right click and hit collapse all, now, it's only showing fields where the relationship is impacted. So notice now, if I highlight over stem sales territory key, it's gonna be highlighted. It's gonna be highlighted here and here. It's just a really nice and easy way to look at all your different relationships that are available uh, when you collapse them. It's a really handy dandy way to look at this model view. Well, let's say you have a lot going on in the data model and even looking at it like this is too much and you just wanna kinda of isolate certain pockets. Well, in this data model that I currently have, I have two different fact tables with many different dimensions that some of them are connecting to both and some are not. Well, let's say I just wanted to look at my fact sales quota uh, 
section of the model. And that's it. And not this other stuff. I could zoom in on this side and just look at it like this. But it's still a little cumbersome to look at it this way. Well, Power BI has this neat feature where you can actually create new tabs in your model view. So if I create a new tab and then I drag in my fact sales quota table, drop it in. Now I'm just looking at this table. Okay, well, currently it doesn't look like it has any relationships on it. Keep in mind that this is just a view of how you want it to look. The relationships are still there in the background. This is just a kind of view to see what's going on. What I can do now is I can right click on this table, hit add related tables. Now it pulls up all the tables that have a relationship to my fact sales quota table. Makes it real easy. And then I could take it a step further like I did before. Right click, hit collapse all, boom. Makes it look nice and good. So when you have a data model that might be pushing 20, 30, 40 different tables in it, having different layouts per whatever section you want to look at at a time will make it so much easier to digest and analyze your relationships and how your modeling model is functioning. Keep in mind that you can rename this layout. I could call this the backed sales quota layout if I wanted to. And now I know exactly what this tab is. And of course, I could always go back to the all tables tab that shows the entire data model, also known as the semantic layer. So that's it for today on data modeling, little tips and tricks in Power BI. Thanks for joining me. Again, I'm Nick Lee from Pragmatic Works. And I just want to say Pragmatic Works has the best training out there for not only Power BI. I mean, we have training for Teams. We have a training for OneNote. We have trainings for basically everything in the Microsoft space that you can imagine. Azure Data Factory, Synapse, Databricks, SSIS, whatever it is you're looking for, something, any type of Microsoft product you can imagine, we have some type of training on it. Make sure you check it out. We have a link to the website below and exclusively we have all types of different types of training as well, such as we have dashboards in a day where you learn something in a day. We have boot camps where you can do stuff throughout a week. We have virtual mentoring where you get some private hours with someone like me or one of my colleagues and we could help you solve whatever problems you want. We have hackathons where we can spend a whole day, you know, figuring out whatever's going on and building you a solution that works for whatever type of Microsoft product you need. All that stuff is available on our website listed down in the description below and make sure you use my discount code. My discount code is Nick40, N-I-C-K-40. Use that code, get yourself a discount, get some training from us, and really elevate your skills. Thanks for joining me on this. Again, Nick Lee here. Hope to see you soon.